Hi all, welcome back to T's Theses. Before I get started with my book review today, I wanted to share with you my t-shirt that I got from Dollywood. We headed off to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee for our spring break this week, and I got this t-shirt. I think it's cute. You think it's cute? It's cute, right? So for today, I have for you Sleepless by author Romney Hosman. I actually did have a copy of this book, but I lost it. I laid it down somewhere and I can't find it. So y'all will be okay with a cover of the book sitting off in the corner somewhere, right? You should be okay with that. Um, so the reason why I picked up this book is because back in the fall, for any of you who remember, I did a review of Dear Child and I ran across this book in the drugstore and I was pleasantly surprised with the book. Unfortunately, Sleepless is no Dear Child and it left me at kind of a loss for words because I didn't even really know how I felt about this book. At one point, I was even questioning why was it even called Sleepless? But then I started thinking about maybe if you're one of those people who barely get any sleep at night, who struggle to find sleep, kind of like me, and you're kind of just aimlessly going through life, sort of like a zombie, then that might describe the main character, Nausea. The thing about this book that left me speechless was that it wasn't really a story. It was kind of like just a small event in time, kind of like if you were talking to a friend and they were telling you about an event that happened to them that day at the bank. Um, it didn't really follow the normal lines of a story where you have your exposition and then you have your rising action and then your climax. The beginning of the events didn't really start until about a third of the way into the book. The first part of the book is mainly filled with background information on events that happen to some of the characters. First, you have this story that's being written by this person to their brother in the book. And then you later find out that this is part of an exercise by their therapist. And you find out that the letters are never sent. Then you have this story about this married man and this woman. And the woman ends up dead. And the man ends up going to prison for her murder, even though he doesn't commit it. And then you have the main story where it involves this woman named Nausea. So you're not really sure about how the letter and the story with the married man and the woman kind of ties into the story. But when you do end up finding out how it ties into the story, it's kind of not necessary. Maybe the letters are... But the background story with the man, the married man and the woman don't really, they aren't really necessary for this story that's being told. So what's the book about? So in Sleepless, we meet a woman by the name of Nausea and Nausea is working at this law firm and she's there one night by herself. And this woman, Laura, who she first became friends with at the law firm, because as I said, Naja's one of those people who's just kind of aimlessly moving through life and she's a loner. And so at the beginning of her employment at the law agency, Laura befriended her when she, Naja kind of had a, like a little freak out on her first day and ran off to the bathroom and Laura reached out to her. And she helped her get out of the bathroom and go back to work. So Naja always had this little special place in her heart for Laura. So as time goes on, Laura ends up marrying one of the partners at the law firm. So she leaves the law firm to have a child and be a stay-home mother. And so that, of course, leaves Naja on her own. But she's fine. And then there's this incident when after Laura has her baby, she brings the baby back to the law firm for everybody to see. And while all the women are drinking and toasting, the baby disappears. And there's this big shutdown at the law office only for Jero, Laura's husband, to find Naja on the rooftop with the baby. And so, of course, this gives everybody a scare. And Jero wants to fire Naja. However, one of the other partners talks him out of it. And we don't find out why until later on in the story. So, of course, you can see that this causes a strain in the relationship between Laura and Naja, where you ran off with my baby and I don't know what you were going to do with her on the roof. But several years pass and Laura shows back up at the law firm and she's crying and she's distraught and she asks Naja for help. And Naja, remembering how Laura was there for her on her first day at the law firm, 
she's willing to be there for her. She wants a friend. She wants somebody in her life. So she's willing to be there for Laura. And she drives Laura back home only to find that there's a dead body laying in her living room. So after getting over the initial shock of finding a dead body on the floor, Naja and Laura begin to come up with plans on what they should do. And they start to consider how they would dispose of the body. But of course, they work at a law firm. So they're starting to think about, well, 95% of all bodies show back up. Like, regardless of how you decide that you're going to destroy this person's body, some kind of way they always show back up. And Laura comes up with this idea that her grandmother owned this country home miles and miles away from where they are right now. And maybe they can take the body there and bury it. So Naja spends the night at Laura's house and Laura's husband comes home and he doesn't seem very surprised that Naja's there. So the next morning, Laura's husband, Gerald, gets up and takes off to go play golf with one of his friends. And the two women head to this country home in separate vehicles. Well, the thing is that when Naja gets there, she sees Laura's husband and he ends up binding her and kidnapping her and stuffing her in a room. And come to find out that the man that was laying on the floor was Laura's lover. And Gerald is not too happy to know that his wife was having an affair. But we later find out that Gerald knew about the dead body laying on the floor, that he knew that his wife was having an affair. And because of Naja's past, where she's gone to prison herself for allegedly killing someone, that they use this to their advantage and they are going to try to pin this murder on Naja. However, even though Gerald is not willing to send the mother of his child to prison, he still isn't okay with her cheating on him. She has professed to him that she was wrong for what she did and she has realized that she does love him. However, he is going to help her cover up this murder but he's not going to let it go. He's going to hold this over her head for the rest of her life. However, things do not go as planned because Gerald decides that he's going to have this mock court trial because he's not just going to let his wife get away with cheating on him and thinking that it's okay. And Naja ends up using this to her advantage and she's able to get away from the two of them and she runs off into the woods. However, as they are chasing Naja in the woods, they begin to consider that maybe this isn't the right way because Naja's not going to go nicely with this. She's not going to go, she, she's not the docile person that they thought she was considering that she did go to prison for someone's death. So they might have kind of um, underestimated her. And as time passes and they start to consider that maybe it's not right to send someone to prison for a crime they did not commit. Things, plans change and Naja doesn't end up taking the fall for this murder. Someone else does. And as I said, it's just not really a story. Sleepless wasn't really a story. It was like I said, more like just an event in time, this one thing that was happening. So we don't really have the rising action. And when we get to the climax, nothing is really resolved. I mean, Naja realizes that maybe I can be a little bit more than this person. I've been my whole life since I got out of prison that maybe I am, Is there's more to me than this person who's kind of just been soaking, leading a life. But we don't really get to know her enough to really care that she's changed. And because I felt like this wasn't a really well-developed story that, like I said, it was just an event in time of something that happened, I ended up giving the book two stars. And I'm sad to say that I'm very disappointed that I couldn't give this book more. Because as I said, Dear Child was this amazing read. It was this amazing story, this amazing build up where you didn't know what was going to happen, where you, there end up being the story that involved into something more 
than you thought was on the surface. And I was looking for that in this book and it didn't happen. And I hate it when you fall in love with this author's writing and then they write another book and it just kind of, you know, you, you're here, you're expecting so much and then it just kinds of falls flat. But Hosman's not the first author to do this and I'm sure she's not going to be the last, but I hope so. I hope I can find an author where I pick up one book after the other and I am pleasantly surprised each time. So that concludes today's video. I want to thank any of you who stuck around with me until the end. And until next time, you guys take care, stay safe, and try to do something nice for a stranger so we can all do our part to make this world a better place.